our history and come out strong and stronger than ever. In fact, I'd like to, to uh, suggest a different label for challenges. Now, I work with people with all kinds of adversities and challenges and problems, and I like to reframe it that adversity are op uh, and challenges are opportunities. That we need the, oftentimes need the challenge, or the, yeah, the challenges, the adversities, to break free, to break the old, and to go into the new. So uh, that's true of um, individuals, and it's true of uh, organizations um, and groups such as Unity of Appleton. Sometimes we, we need the adversities to break free and go into the new. And uh, this morning is a celebration, not only of having overcome and gone into opportunities, but to uh, talk more about the, uh, what lies ahead of us, for us. But I'd like to uh, uh, start with a little bit of reference to what uh, Reverend Aubrey Lynn talked about last week in terms of the history of unity. Because from history, we are launched forward. And so understanding some of the history is really important, I think, to not only as we will this morning take a look at some of the history of Unity of Appleton, but the history of, uh, of unity, if you will, of new thought. And so I'd like to, to start with just a, a, a little bit more uh, of the history that uh, Reverend Aubrey Lynn introduced uh, last week. You know, you could go as far back, probably even further, to the ancient Greeks. Uh, Plato, for instance, uh, talked about ideal forms, that what this material reality is not what is really real. It's the, the realm of ideal forms. And certainly, uh, you, uh, the unity movement, the New Thought movement, uh, capitalizes on that. Uh, much, much later, uh, we can come to a, a, a person called Emanuel Swedenborg, uh, and he, like uh, Charles Fillmore, uh, he, he visited heaven, Charles Hillmore went to headquarters, <laughs> but it's the same thing. And uh, he believed in the perfection of humans. And that was, that was back in the 1600s into the 1700s, so quite a far back. Uh, we're going to uh, step forward quite a bit. And next, uh, Franz Mesmer. He's a, a German who really introduced uh, or started the, the hypnotism movement. And so we have mesmerism as a, a word from, from his name. And he was convinced that there were ways to heal from the mind. And one of the earliest to really practice it, if you will. Along came uh, a man, and this is, now we're jumping from Europe to America, named Phineas Quimby who's oftentimes considered the father of New Thought. And he was kind of a student of Mesmer and believed also that uh, the mind can heal. And it's really in referencing the mind that we need to address anything that is a challenge or is an opportunity. Um, then came the transcendentalist of Emerson and Thoreau, and so we got a kind of an intellectual footing for a new thought. Uh, and, and that is, a, I think, an important component uh, for, a, for a new thought, of which Unity, of course, is a, a key um, example. But new thought is not to be uh, confused with uh, new age. Uh, new thought is really the the grounding, if you will, of the, the whole idea that uh, we have within us uh, the divine. We have within us the ability to uh, alter life through the way we orient our mind. And that was a very d different way, if you will, from uh, the way uh, that um, traditional Christianity had, had trained. You know, we, we celebrated Martin Luther King Day, uh, birthday, and uh, his memory uh, last week. And one of the quotes from him, and of course there are many, uh, is that, are that um, uh, we are not made by history, uh, we make history. Now he's speaking to 
slaves, or people that have been uh, slaves, or the ancestors of slaves. And they need to know that uh, history isn't uh, containing them, that rather they're making history. In a way, that's true of unity, and new, true of new thought, that uh, we're not made by the history of traditional Christianity, we're making history uh, in a new sort of way. And I think two things come out, or really stand out as a, a launch pad for, um, <clears throat> for new thought. One is a, a healing. As I've already mentioned, uh, healing can, occurs in the mind. And of course in, in Miracles, for instance, talks about all healing is of the mind. Uh, Jerry Jampolsky, who some of you may be aware of, uh, was noted to work with a lot of seriously ill and typically terminally ill children. And so how could there be healing? Well, the healing is of the, our minds. It's not necessarily a physical outcome, though it may, but it's how we are able to orient our minds. Um, and, and I think that Charles and Myrtle Fillmore were prime examples of that. We all know about Myrtle uh, healing herself from tuberculosis. Um, and Charles, uh, likewise, after he, he uh, watched his wife heal herself, was very impressed and said, I, uh, there must be something to this, so I'm going to put it to the test. And I'd like to read to you um, an excerpt from his own writings, the essential Charles Fillmore that uh, Reverend Aubrey Quintalin uh, referenced last week. This is the older edition. They've got a new one now. Um, but this is about his healing. And his is less no, lesser known than, uh, than uh, his wife's. But uh, I think it's, it's very profound, too. So I can testify to my own healing of tuberculosis of the hip. When a boy of 10, I was taken with what was at first diagnosed as rheumatism but developed into a very serious case of hip disease. I was in bed over a year, and from that time an invalid in constant pain for 25 years, or until I began the application of the divine law. Two very large tubercular abscesses developed at the head of the hip bone, which the doctor said would finally drain away my life. But I managed to get about on crutches with a four-inch cork and steel extension on the right leg. The hip bone was out of the socket and stiff. The leg shriveled and ceased to grow. The whole right side became involved. My right ear was deaf and my right eye weak. From hip to knee, the flesh was a glassy adhesion with but little sensation. When I began applying the spiritual treatment, there was, for a long time, slight response in the leg, but I felt better, and I found that I began to hear with the right ear. Then gradually I noticed that I had more feeling in, in the leg. Then as the years went by, the ossified joint began to get limber, and the shrunken flesh filled out, until the right leg was almost equal to the other. Then I discarded the cork and steel extension and wore an ordinary shoe with a double heel about an inch in height. Now the leg is almost as large as the other. The muscles are restored, and although the hip bone is not yet in the socket, I am certain that it soon will be, and I shall be made perfectly whole. And he, indeed, he lived the rest of his life um, in much better shape physically. That's just uh, a very profound uh, example of uh, what new thought turned into unity uh, can lead to. It leads to healing. But again, healing of the mind especially, and the body may follow. So healing is a very uh, real uh, part of our foundation. The other one, I think, is that um, we are free to really grow. And I think it's not an accident that new thought really took root in America. Know, how America was founded by a lot of people that came here to um, have their own faith and be able to uh, enjoy it and practice it as they wished. Uh, well, 
that kind of ground, I think, was sown the seeds for new thought that said, in effect, uh, what's, what's an adventure? Let's take an adventure into faith. What is faith really practically? It's not what we're taught, but what does it do for us? And, and out of that came the healing and the, uh, the really doctrine of, or the ideas, I should say, the principles uh, of New Thought, which I think are encapsulated in the uh, five principles of unity. That God is the only thing there really is, that we are all part of God, and there is no, no sin or wrong or bad in, in us that uh, what we think is really the way that life gets oriented. Uh, prayer is our connection, so we can go to headwards, headquarters along with uh, Charles, and uh, that we must practice it and, and spread it. Well, I think that's exactly what we've done here in uh, Unity. Uh, we've, we've practiced uh, what this faith is all about, and it's led us through a lot, a lot of uh, opportunities to grow. Uh, and so this morning, the rest of it uh, will be open to all of us to participate in terms of a reflection on uh, those of us who have been here for quite a while, uh, how we've ma managed some of the opportunities that we've um, encountered and come through even stronger. And for those that might be newer, how what draws you here uh, that is a promise for something better in your life and in the life of uh, Unity of Appleton. So it's a matter of faith, and one of the things that I, I like in faith, by the way, I remember uh, Reverend Wilkins, who was here uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, said that faith was the access point to the other 12, other 11 powers. Uh, it's, it's the one that opens things up as we have faith. And I've often thought that, you know, we're living by faith 24-7. None of us know for sure what's going to happen uh, even with the next breath. Unfortunately, uh, a person that I know um, from Lawrence's son recently had a, a pulmonary embolism and, and died on the spot. Uh, that's the kind of thing that, you know, it, it certainly can happen. The point being that we live by faith every moment. We live by faith, I can have my next breath. I can uh, share with you my next thought, and comfortably. Well, oftentimes we don't think that we're living by faith, but, but indeed we are. And I would like to, uh, maybe, maybe if I may, just, uh, I'd like to have, or create some, or present some quotes uh, about faith First from Charles Fillmore, and then we'll get some others too. We are standing in the midst of infinite substance. Like the fish, we might ask, where is the water? When we live and move and have our being in it, it is in the water, in the air everywhere, abounding, glorious, spiritual substance, accessed by faith. <clears throat> Another one of uh, Charles Fillmore's many ideas. <coughs> Faith connects us to invisible realities and draws forth possibilities into experiences and things. Faith is that uh, uh, avenue of getting in touch with uh, that which is infinite. And from Eric Butterworth, one of the uh, key unity teachers, uh, and he says, faith is really, I love this one, I have it on, on my desk. Faith is really your consent to let your own uniqueness unfold and to let that which is attracted by your uniqueness manifest in your life. I think that's really neat. Um, and then one that uh, is very famous from uh, the uh, book of Hebrews in the New Testament, chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Uh, however, I think one of the things that uh, unity has uh, shown is that we can see it, if you will, in terms of how we uh, express faith. And then I added something myself. 
<laughs> Couldn't resist. <laughs> Faith is, is an adventure into the emotional awareness of our divinity. I, I really like the idea of our emotional grounding in something. Uh, the other quotes tend to be a little more intellectually oriented, which are fine, and we need that. But I think we really act from our heart, and our heart knows what uh, our mind can't fully encompass. And that's really the source of faith. It's, it's coming from our heart, from the source of love, compassion, consideration, kindness, and joy. And so faith is really an adventure into the emotional awareness of our joy that uh, comes from uh, our divinity, knowing that in a deep, deep sense. So with uh, I just put down a few questions to, to launch this uh, reflection, but not, uh, let's see, faith in the context of unity of Appleton and your own, uh, your, your own life, too, because uh, this is meant to be a reflection on how we've been able to overcome certain things and, uh, and find new possibilities, new openness. Uh, so that's the intent here. So uh, you may take a look at that as, as a, uh, something that uh, may spur some thought. Uh, but I'd like to start with a reflection that Cindy, and uh, as was noted by Paige, She's unable to be with us today because of the COVID. Uh, she emailed this to me, and uh, she has been with Unity maybe the longest of all of us that are here uh, currently, um, and has some wonderful reflections. So I'd like to read uh, what she uh, what she wants to uh, be uh, uh, mindful of this morning. First, she says some history. I have been with Unity from its meetings in 18, uh, 1989. <laughs> That's a long time to say, but from in 1989 at the YMCA, uh, many of us can remember those days, to a rental in a mini mall on Law Street, where I became the administrative assistant for nearly 14 years. I don't know if you were aware of that, for some of you that are newer, that she was the administrative assistant for 14 years. Um, and um, she, uh, she was uh, yeah, part of the administration of the Great Lakes region of Unity Churches. Unity has introduced me to a loving presence in God and shown me God in the people I have met since. Its principles are over 100 years strong and still work in this day and age, which shows they are timeless. The Bible says, where two or more are gathered, there am I in the midst of them. I have read a modern interpretation of that that says the power of two people in thought is like two squared or four people. Three people squared equals nine and so on. Imagine the power of a group of people focused on an outcome to benefit themselves and others. I want to tell you the story from 2017 to illustrate how a group of people united in this common goal has manifested in the community has manifested the community and building we now have. We have had many fundraisers during these decades aimed at building up a um, Home of Our Own Fund, which is the acronym for Home of Our Own. This has been a dream that took decades and happened when our past building seemed stripped away and some wondered if we would continue. We have had four ministers and one spiritual leader and the help of many congregants who have gotten us to this point. We used faith and affirmation to get through a very difficult period. And so here is a story from the Board of Trustees report from 2017. That's a, a, a very pivotal year for us. This past year has been a, a, has seen a wide swing from the after effects of our minister leaving and a lack of believing in the continuance uh, of unity of Appleton to a home of our own, the actual building that we have been envisioning for decades and an increase in membership. It's been an amazing year, not always easy to understand while going through it. This was all done with faith and teamwork of the board and congregants and what we wanted the unity to be. 
in February, we had only one returning board member, and three new board members stepped up. Was the minimum number of board members our bylaws required? The new board members believed in the community and knew it was important for it to continue. Jay and Cindy became treasurer and president. We continued with weekly uh, spirit speakers who sometimes included outside speakers, but mostly through the town inspiration and commitment of members and congregants as we are now. As we are now. And, we, um, and we hired an interim minister from Unity Worldwide who helped us in the transition time like the one we are going through now. All spring, we had been discussing updating our facilities and possibly moving from Wall Street uh, if finances did not approve after our minister left. For those who there knew, we were over on Wall Street uh, for a number of years. In early May, May, our landlord at 1800 South Wall Street gave us 90 days to vacate, although even, um, even sooner was better for him. He had rented to the State Head Start program, and they wanted to have renovations done and moved in by August 1st. We appreciated our landlord and so did everything we could to move out much earlier than the 90 days and were officially out before the end of June. I know um, that, uh, uh, that you remember that well, Jay. <laughs> we rented storage uh, facilities for the church's furniture and, and miscellaneous. We kept the faith and looked at many uh, rentals but eventually uh, rented from First Congregational Church on East South River Street, and were given afternoon availability of their small chapel and held the services um, at 6 p.m. on Sundays. The time was not conducive to everyone, especially with children. This was concerning. We continued to look for another space to rent. Uh, Bedford Hines wrote a new affirmation for us to claim our new home. Arden Math Matisse sold, uh, told us, Spirit assured us that, uh, that it was on its way. With this affirmation repeated at services and at home, and our belief in Arden's assurance, we manifested this building that we are here today. In the fall, uh, a member of our congregation who was also looking for a rental space told us about a possible shared rental, uh, which turned out to be our new building. And we had uh, somebody here that helped us out uh, with our uh, cost. Um, but after two years of steady payments, we felt we could go back to Capital Credit Union, who at first were, were uh, not accepting us for a mortgage, and obtained a traditional loan at a lower interest rate, which is basically what happened. And Carrie remembers a lot of that, <laughs> along with Bill Bain. The, the new building needed a building maintenance technician, and we also became owners of a Toyota truck with a building purchase. A member who was trained carpenter who also needed a truck has done an exchange for us in time uh, for payment towards the truck, a win-win situation. Our first Sunday in the new space, we had no heat, only space heaters, but we were home and we were grateful. In November, Spirit spoke again to a young mother in our congregation and asked her to become our new spiritual leader. And she had already been taking uh, unit, licensed Unity teacher classes. Uh, goes on, we realized we needed to paint the inside of the building, and of course, we've done much of that. Um, and again, thanks to Tom for this beautiful uh, wall and uh, design here. Um, a young mother or two who attended youth and training, uh, family training in Minneapolis in September agreed to be the head of our um, YFM program and officially launched it in January. Our music team had a lot to, uh, of setup time for our sound system and they had the help of a sound man from another church. We had a, a sign fundraiser goal and added a sign outside, as many of you know, with our tagline to advertise our new home. Uh, and of course we know it's located at a very prime place as far as being highly visible and accessible. Um, we enjoyed the help of many people who loved this church community and pitched in to help with packing, cleaning, moving, and cleaning again. 
searching for rentals, arranging financing and contractors, and maintaining and cleaning our new home of our own. There were numerous things that needed to be done on, uh, from Sunday speaking to praying with congregants. You, the Congregation of Unity of Appleton, stepped up and left the Spirit through you. And finally, this is all made possible with faith in our goals and affirmations. Thank you, God. We love you, we bless you, and we appreciate you. When we see the power of a group envisioning their wishes together, we see these amazing results. You watching in person and via the internet now are a part of it. A growing movement where we reach more people with the unity message, a message of love and healing. Remember the unity affirmation and the five principles. They work. We have the proof. You are the proof. Respectfully submitted, Cindy Guzno. I think it's a beautiful uh, history, uh, if you will, and something that we all need to be mindful of. So with that in mind, and with our faith strong and vibrant and leading us forward, uh, I, I invite now anybody who would like to come up, share the microphone, because we want to be, have it visible on, uh, to those who join us on, uh, online, uh, and share whatever you might share from the history going forward uh, and how we've uh, gone through uh, the opportunities presented to us, or going forward, and or going forward, and how you see this uh, happening. So whoever would like to come up, please do so. I'm Beverly. I'm a recovering addict, and I'm just grateful that unity exists. Um, I joined Unity in 1990. I was surprised that I thought I, I thought Cindy was there longer than what she said, because I I met Cindy. Didn't really know who she was then. Is this on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, I knew April Cambries, who was a lead librarian at UW Fox Valley. And I was telling her how I was not getting what I needed from Overuse and Anonymous. I got a lot, I'll never forget it. Uh, their, their 12 powers are very similar, but they're lacking the spiritual that unity has. April and her mother were two of the five founding members for Unity of Appleton. And she convite, you know, told me about, about you and I eventually ended up in unity, which started with only five people, and they were still doing that, just reading the book of Quest, which was written for the unity, where was that, well, the unity of Christianity at that time. And I just knew I was in the right place, and that's, that was my start reading that book. Were you there when, when you were doing that? Um, and that was only, it was, I think they started in about 
1985, 84, I'm not sure about that. But it was shortly after that member, because there were just very few members that started coming. One of the most important members, no, that's not right. <laughs> One of the very good guiding members of Unity was, I'm not gonna remember his name, the, the, uh, he was the uh, head of the music group at Lawrence University. Okay. Rick. 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 Okay. I don't remember a lot of details, and sometimes when I say details, I might not be right. Um, anyway, she, he and his wife were became real big members of Unity, and his music is what started us having services. But they were just with us. Not me yet, because I'm just there yet. But, you know, everybody took, a, took their turns, and we kind of started the services shortly after I started. And it was wonderful, and then we brought in ministers. And I'm going to explain to you what, how I ended up with this because it was very emotional for me. I'd only been there about it, two years maybe. And um, we had a minister that came in from Chicago. And it happened to be membership, me membership, me um, membership meeting. It, them joining us, joining the membership. And the service was wonderful. We had had a couple of ministers, but his was really great. And we, I was sitting in the back row, and he started the, the, for the ceremony for, jo for members joining. And a couple of, there were a couple that were joining that day and everybody had, they were, were grading a rose when they came up there. But he said, if there's anybody in there that wants to join, just come, come and come up in front with us. I sat there for a minute or two and I got up and I walked up. And they didn't have a rose for me. They didn't have anything else for me because I didn't go to classes or anything. And there I was. I became a member, and everybody was joyful for me. And um, but I could hear the <gasps> as I got up <laughs> and whatever. And it, so my joining the church was just. divine order, I guess. That's all it could have been. And so then we continued, and Cindy wrote a lot of what was happening. And I, I did give, a, I did take the membership, um, the message, I did the message a couple of times when we were at the Congregation of Church. It was really dark in there, I remember. It was dark in there, it was kind of gloomy, but, um, I did a couple of those, and I was going to do another one all about Myrtle, the founder of, of Unity. And um, that's when things started to happen. And I, I also want to talk about getting to the church when we got, went to the Lost Street. That was our first time we had our own place. And we, um, and it was wonderful starting out there. But in 1999, and just before that, I don't know when, Cheryl came. We hired our first minister. And Cheryl was one of them. And I've got, I just want to explain how much the spirituality came to me at that time. It was 1999. and. We were going to have a walkthrough of this place on Lost Street to see if we were going to do something that would join us, that would be for us. 
and the day was done, chosen that was going to be, and I had only been out of the hospital about a week. I had had double bypass with, and I have the zipper like nobody has anymore, you know, open heart kind of thing. And my husband brought me to the, to the, what am I saying? My husband brought me there so that, that I could be there looking at, if, at this place. And Cheryl, Cheryl was at the hospital with me. Cheryl was there with my whole family. And she calmed my family down. And she said I was the one that was calming my family down. <laughs> and she was very special to me. So I have all these memories of the beginning that has brought me to the point where I am today. And I'm so appreciative because it's through these years that I grew and I've grown and I know we grow every day. Thank you. about this topic and you, were, you know you talked about um, talking about faith today and the word expectation kept coming to me um, last week I was chairperson and I almost did a little thing on expectation but it didn't seem to really fit and uh, so I had been looking up some things and I found some quotes that said things like uh, keep your expectations low then you won't be disappointed and <laughs> that didn't resonate for me at all um, and part of that is because of unity you know if you have and I feel like expectations and and faith go hand in hand um, and so I I came into unity about 12 years ago when April Cambreeze was our uh, minister then and uh, unity felt like home uh, and when and when she was leaving, it was really hard for me. I, I just had a really hard time because she embodied unity to me. Although, I think everyone who comes to unity is a teacher. Um, I've learned so much from everybody. Uh, and so we went through, we had a, a transition minister come who did a, a program, he called it Popkoff, Healing Our Past, Creating Our Future. And during that time, I was, I was saying how sad I was that she was leaving and somebody else said, we've been through this before. We've been through this lots of times before, having one you know, minister come and be for a while and then another one, another one and this transition. And, and so I feel like faith has, has been a kind of a consistent thread through all of that, through all of the people coming and going Faith has been faith in unity, the faith that I have in spirit, in universe, in divine order has kind of flowed through all of that. And now we're in another transition. Um, you know, we had Lydia for four years, almost four years, and uh, and now she is doing something else. And we, uh, this is a great, like Bedford said, an opportunity for us. And with that faith that weaves through all of us. Um, I'm sure that um, we will grow, we will continue to be spiritually fed, and um, we, will, we will thrive. Thank you. Uh, you know, Cindy uh, covered so much in her letter so well. Um, there was Every, we had gotten, we had gotten, that's terrible. Um, we had this font for a home of our own, and we were starting to use it for other things, and we were kind of siphoning off, and we said, okay, we have to make an energetic difference here in our next 
well, we had a <laughs> landlord said, you're out. <laughs> okay, we're moving. <laughs> and we got this chunk of change and uh, that was donated years and years, really, before. And Cindy and I, in, in talking with everybody about it, we got everyone to agree to, hey, it's now or never. We <laughs> have to put our money where our heart is. We have to commit. And that's what it, it was. I mean, it was a little scary, I admit. You know, as treasurer and president, we sat down and wrote the check for 70000 out of our, and we had a whopping $10,000 left. Gee, gosh. And uh, so we had to put extreme faith into us, into unity. And it's, you know, we have been blossoming, and we will continue to blossom in so many wonderful ways, unexpected ways. It's never going to be the same but it's gonna be different and wonderful. And that's really all I have to add. I do have to give credit to Lydia, kind of threw the church on her back and <laughs> got through a long distance time when we were really just working where we were not able to meet. So that's, I, I give credit there. But we also have to imagine our next step. I mean, when um, we have three scheduled um, almost scheduled um, connections with Reverend Phil and I encourage everyone to be a part of that because you make the difference you are imagining a next step of unity so it's time to take action <laughs> like like uh, Charles Fillmore would say that action has got to come along with faith so it's time and I just ask that you join us in our vision. Not many faiths have vision, and we we have a wonderful vision of our future. So with that, I'm done. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. astonished that we're not in a 10,000 seat church. <laughs> Why aren't we? Because when you think about what, mo I mean again I've told you before I walked into a unity church the first time I saw the symbols of the different world religions and it made me cry. My husband's Muslim. I got tired of hearing let's hope that he finds Jesus Christ or he's going to go to hell because I had heard that multiple times before I got married uh, with churches who wouldn't marry us, right? So then I find unity and go, wow. Because again, most religions are like, God is out here. We're talking about the fact that God is in here. And that is mind blowing. Mind blowing when you really think about it. Because for us, we're like, well, isn't that cool? But for most people, <laughs> it's mind blowing. That's why some of us, it's why we came to unity in the first place. Because what we were raised with, for so many of us, what we were raised with didn't work for us, right? And so to me, I think that our, one of the things we have to look about for the future is how do we get more people to understand what unity is all about, especially younger people, that this is a way of living that can profoundly change the whole world. Because if people truly felt God is in me, then I have no right to take your life, to say that you are wrong, stupid, ignorant, anything because I can see the divinity in you, no matter what your age, your gender, your color, your orientation of any kind, because I recognize the divinity in you. And to me, that is so incredibly powerful that I wanna go stand on corners and yell it, you know? But there's gotta be a way for us to be able to get that message out. Putting that out there. time, but on the other hand, I don't want to uh, deny anybody if, if there's anything you want to say. I'd like to uh, close with a story of um, unity itself, Myrtle Fillmore especially. Uh, it was a, a meeting. Uh, they were not, this was a fledgling uh, operation, if you will. Uh, money was very low, and they had a, a meeting. Um, what are we going to do next? And one person um, popped up and said, let us pray that our money holds out. And Myrtle immediately said, no, let us pray that our faith holds out. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's really what unity is about. It's living the faith and knowing that everything is in divine order and things will work out. Just hold to it. So I think we're on a precipice of something really fantastic. And uh, I uh, look forward to uh, celebrating all of that with all of you as we go forward. So, um, who's next? We're going to do the meditation. Okay. So, um, assume a position of, of comfort as we go into. Sure, I will. Um, I invite now you uh, begin to prepare yourself for a reflective personal prayer and guided musical meditation, after which I ask that you remain in essential silence. If you choose to, you may close your eyes and feel the weight of your body as it relaxes into the chair and you let your today's anxieties go. And feel your feet on the solid earth beneath you as you let go tomorrow's worries and become aware of this moment your breathing as you breathe in life and breathe out love breathe in life and breathe out love and as you become centered focus your attention on your beautiful heart your beautiful Christ self. Become filled with gratitude and allow into yourself that which fills you with peace and peace and light.
I'll now even invite you back gently to this place and time. We will continue with Sunday services in a meeting in person with a few small changes. Uh, uh, we'd like everyone to wear the better K90, uh, KN95 masks, um, uh, space ourselves out a little further, um, and we're discontinuing the after service coffee and cookies. Uh, <clears throat> we need chairpersons for Sunday services. There's a sign-up sheet back on the back table. It's really easy to do, as I demonstrated today. <laughs> uh, um, your 2021 statement of giving should be in your email. Those were, I think, mailed out. I got mine last, last week, I think. Uh, let Paige know if you need one, if you didn't get one. Um, <clears throat> uh, the Happier Than God book group uh, is uh, going to start meeting. It's six weeks uh, starting February 5th, but they're skipping the 19th because we have a, a workshop here on the 19th. Uh, anyone can sign up for it, um, although the class is limited to eight people so that there could be discussions. I think there's only one slot left, so grab it while you can. Uh, and I highly recommend the leader, Karen. Um, so, and you all know why. Um, and then the February 19th coming up, uh, Reverend Phil uh, Smenstead will be leading a Zoom workshop. Uh, titled Claiming and Living Your Divinity. Uh, Reverend Phil is, uh, is working as a transition um, minister from Unity Worldwide to help walk us through the process of finding a new leader for our church. So he's gonna be with us for, um, he's gonna do three of these Zoom meetings um, and then do a sermon the Sunday after um, to help help us focus on what we want. Um, as Bedford said, this is really an opportunity for us to find the right fit for how we want to go forward. Um, and uh, so put, Mark, save that on your calendar. It's going to be four or five hours long. With a break for lunch. With a break for lunch, OK. And are we going to meet here at church, or do you go are you gonna? Are we gonna be zooming at home? I think it's gonna be an either a both and. Oh, both. Okay. All right. And um, let's uh, <clears throat> move into our affirmation of prosperity, and then we'll do our uh, collection. Uh, join me. Uh, unity of Appleton is alive and in the spirit, and spirit in the flow of divine abundance. Of and radiant with unlimited possibilities. Celebration of giving and receiving. Divine love in and through me bless and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I joyfully give and willingly receive. I give love and I trust God as my source. Wake up, you sleepy head, your life's going by. Each moment that passes is lost now's the time. To put on your traveling shoes, step out the front door. Take a chance, take a risk, in life there's much more. If you're always looking
that you're thinking of it's too late to start when your spirit is ageless she's deep in your heart so let go each thought that binds see your dreams take hold can't you see you're alive and you're free to grow if you're always looking Precisely what uh, is happening right now. We affirm that we are on a wonderful journey leading to ever more unfolding wonders of the unity of Appleton. And these are our gifts, our symbols of that. And, we, and so it is. Amen. And I'd just like to add a little personal note um, because it's very easy to sign up for. Um, automatic uh, donation to the church at, at the Unity of Appleton um, website. I was reluctant to go because I thought it would be complicated and I did it last night. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's really helpful to the church to know that there's a regular flow coming in because, um, <clears throat> you know, you like to have a steady paycheck. Um, let's stand for our prayer protection. Okay. <clears throat> the light, light of God, God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And one more song from our band. 